I really want to start the interview off with the most important thing. Is Max part of a government program to see how fast someone can grow in such a short period of time? <laughs> we've, yeah. we've, we've been doing experiments on him. Well, we've actually been shooting the show for almost five years. So it probably seems like not as long as it is, but he is tall. He got really tall. Well, between the second and third season, he grew six feet, he did. you know? Let, let's be honest, but anyway, let me let me be serious. Um, when, when you guys all first got involved, I am curious, how much did the writers and everybody tell you ultimately what the arc is going to be? And how much was it sort of like, we have an idea, let, we'll figure it out as we go. I mean, my recollection of the very first season is that they actually had seven or eight scripts fully written, and we sat down and read them all together in a, it, over the course of an afternoon or two, which is actually incredibly rare on a TV show, you know, they might give you some ideas, but it's very, very rare that you're seeing that many scripts up front. Um, so I feel like they've been, they, these writers are actually really open about, about story and, and the directions that they're heading. They, they do, at the very end, there's always sort of, you know, the final episodes seem to kind of take, take longer, but they're good, they're good at beginnings. <laughs> So this is obviously the third and final season. And for each of you guys, I am curious, when you put this much time into something, what is it like on the last day of set? Are you emotional? Like, could you sort of maybe talk about what it was like? And I am curious if you hypothetically borrowed anything from set with obviously the intention of returning it. It's actually quite surreal. I think any job when it comes to an end, when you've been working with a group of people in this kind of intense way and it comes to an end, it's always quite surreal because you're slightly out of body kind of going, this is it, this is the end. I'm not gonna see these people. This is the end of this project. This is the end of, you know. And so the last day is always a bit of a, I think there's always an anti-climax to it as well because I think you want it to be this great thing and often it's just not what, you know, it's so weird. Um, and it's only later when you, uh, when you, when you've finished it, it's about a week later that it sinks in, that it's over. And actually, you know, it's, it's always quite, it, it, it's mostly quite sad because, you know, you, you forge these great relationships specific and particularly with this one, you know, I, I did feel quite sad afterwards because, you know, it's been a real ride making this. Yeah. Yeah. The last day was kind of, was very strange because all of a sudden we were on this, you know, we're on this, uh, we're going 100 miles an hour, and then we stop to say, this is it, and it all hit. And then I got in my truck, not even, I, I had already packed everything. I got in my truck and started driving back across the border at 7 p.m. and in the snow, and it's like, all right, bye, done. There was no, there was no, let's have dinner. There was nothing. I got out of the suit and got in my truck, which was already packed up, and I left from set. Because we were shooting during COVID, you know, we were we started shooting in late August, which was really we were one of the first shows to come back after the initial sort of few months of the pandemic, and so it was a difficult season to shoot. And in some ways, by the time you know we shot that last day on December twenty third you know we knew that the the UK was closing the borders Toby needed to get home hadn't been home in five months and get home for Christmas to see his kids and Ignacio was trying to you know so it was there was a there was a lot going on right at the end but there really was this sense that um we you know we made it through this this really difficult season of COVID and working uh, one of the things about Lost in Space is it never slows down. Each episode, just the, the momentum just keeps going. Um, for you guys, what do you want to tease fans about the final eight? I'm not, I think it's eight episodes or is it 10 episodes? Eight. Yeah, so the, the final eight episodes. I, I think that, um, you know, that uh, they've never been tested like this before. And there's, um, there's a lot of, uh, evidence to suggest they might all, they might not make it. 
<laughs> that's pretty sad. No. Mm. But it's that tough. It's that it's that intense and it's that. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of. Uh, yeah, it was kind of, uh, I guess, at the beginning when we were in the early episodes, when we were having to play those scenes, I was like, oh, wow. It was we've never experienced that before. I mean, we've always been in the danger and everything, but there was always a solution. Mm-hmm. So uh, those scenes of. Uh oh. Yeah, no answers. That was really the, 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 you know, this season three starts and we've sent the kids off on the, all the, all the children from, from all the colonist kids we've sent off at the end of episode two to try to save them. And us adults are sort of left behind. We don't have an alien engine. We cannot get to Alpha Centauri. We are stuck in this sort of robot world. Um, and there's no, there's, there's seemingly no solution. So for, for Maureen, who's had, you know, her, make, you know, her, her thing is there's a, there's always an answer. There's always a solution. And in fact, there isn't. And this sort of sense of just um, failure that I think this season starts with gives us a lot of, of room to, 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 to grow. Yeah, I think it's um, I, 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 the, the, the start of this season is really um, kind of great because, I mean, look, there's an element to this. It's rather like, um, I don't know, there's those cyclical films where, you know, like, I don't know, James Bond, where you know that, you know, you know, you know that he's going to he's there's going to be another one. But you're tricking the audience into believing like it's not going to happen. He's going to die, you know, and like you want that sense of jeopardy. And I think with the with this last season, it's great that it starts in this place where you really do think things are hopeless. And, you know, the, the, the John and Maureen have always been defined by in this show by their kids and by their family and how they are together and they don't have that anymore. And what does that mean that they are? And if they can't be together, then what's gonna to happen to their kids? And the kids are on a different jag where they're trying to desperately survive. And there's just this constant, um, you know, there's this constant sense of like, they're just not gonna make it. And they'll, you know, and you want to, you want an audience to believe that, that there's, there's the, the stakes are, really really high and that people could die and you know and most importantly like uh toby said uh it's important to remind people that he was in a bond film i think that's what he tried to do he was trying to fly <laughs> that's what i got out of the whole thing he was trying to remind people great listen it was such a great people subtle, remember me subtle me. plug subtle plug it was great the movie yeah the movie needed the plug it's back in 98 there, <laughs> there is something that happens towards the end of this season that is utterly, utterly surprising. I've, I've only seen the first four episodes of yeah. uh, season three. It's so, something that I don't think anyone's going to see coming. Now, now I'm very, now I'm very curious. Listen, I, I love learning about the behind the scenes of the making of shows. Mm-hmm. For fans of Lost in Space, is there anything that you think would like surprise them to learn about the making of the show? One of the things that surprised me when we started and certainly throughout the first couple of seasons is how much we shot on location. So, you know, when I, when I, when they first approached me about the project, somehow in my mind, I was like, we're going to be, we're going to be in a studio. We're going to be, you know, on a set. It's all going to be a lot of green screen. And in fact, um, it's been a, there is some of that for sure, but we, we have been out in the elements throughout this show. You know, the first the first season we spent on a mountaintop uh, in the rain and snow. Second season we shot in Iceland. There, there being, um, yeah, that was something that surprised me. I think they'll be surprised that uh, the chicken was voiced by Morgan Freeman. Um, <laughs> it was not easy to get him, but it is. yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> didn't see that answer coming honestly <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it there and just say i really enjoyed the series and thank you for giving me your time uh good luck with the rest of your speed dating today thank you thank Steven. you very much